I'm getting messages already. So why, is, why is the link not live? Check the check the thing. Uh, what Omar is saying on the core chat. I'm getting messages already. So why, is, why is the link not live? Check the check the link. Uh, what Omar is saying on the live. They're ready. For the first time in like four weeks for this. Man, I'm still in my chadr. That's why we got a lot of blank faces. <laughs> Brothers, I don't think the live stream is working on the website. Yeah, yeah what? Uh, we're just dealing with there. there we go. I don't know what's going on. We're, we're Dean developing away. Yeah, on, yeah, the, yeah. on the Dean developer website. <laughs> One second, Sean. Make sure my laptop doesn't die as well. I think everyone's everyone's muted, so I'm just going to assume everyone laughed at the joke, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Usman, did you get a haircut for the for the live stream? No man, it's quite tied up in it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you let my hair out, yeah. No, it looks good. Looks good. <laughs> Long still, bro. Beard needs uh, sorting out though. I'm not gonna lie. How you been anyway? Uh, alhamdulillah, not not bad at all. Not, not bad at all. I took the day off. From work today just to is it just to think um prepare for ramadan take some time to just sit in the garden and not look at my screen which i which i, which I hope some of you guys done as well <laughs> uh, my team have been mad and been just going like writing code until like late into the night i don't think your deadline stood uh, a chance yeah, yeah i know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to see seeing, seeing commits at like what early hours of the morning today as well and uh, to be fair, we <laughs> we just we've been committing like ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like last minute things and that. Let me let me pull it to you. Are we going to be presenting in order of team number? <clears throat> uh, yes, inshallah. That's the that's the hope. Um, team, inshallah. Put the record ball. Yeah, yeah. Just 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 randomly pick one team. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next hackathon, you guys got to make team. Okay. You know, we we were gonna do it this team this time round, but Mashallah Montessori is gonna present what what he's been working on. Yeah. Uh, whilst the rest of the team are doing other stuff, but Montessa, mashallah, uh, is going to present what he's what he's been working on as well. So, inshallah, next time round, we'll, we'll we'll have our own team as well. Because I'm I'm back end, uh, Omar and Inga, uh, Omar and Montessa are front end. Alameen is like BA, and 
and he is uh, Uzair is mashallah a uh, very good business consultant slash product manager. So we, we've got a pretty solid team. The cheating that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next uh, next hackathon is gonna be prizes as well, and we're gonna be the judges. So you know. That means you can't join, though. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I hate to stay obvious. Yeah, <laughs> hate to stay. <laughs> How many repeat hackers did we have here this time? In this, uh, there's, there's quite a few students with you, uh, but there's also quite a few new people as well, which is nice. Mm. Uh, inshallah, hopefully the next one that's in person, getting some of the previous hackathon attendees messaging me to make sure that they're on the list for next time. Mm. Um, so inshallah, the next one, hopefully this this stuff dies down and then we we get to crack on and and think um, have one in person. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, it's like you can give it. It's open to people who couldn't make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to, to London or wherever you host it. So yeah, that room in some um, remote and some in person. Makes it open, doesn't it? Yeah, we're still, we're still waiting on a few people, right? Yeah. Waiting for the live, for the live stream to to you, work. YouTube, uh, oh, is YouTube it working okay? YouTube is working fine, by the way. I think, I think, yeah, because some of my mates um also screenshots saying they're waiting. So um, just because we haven't officially started yet, I'm gonna give a shout out to the East London guys. I yeah. sorry to derail this. I hope sorry to derail it, but yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, a bunch of notifications now. No, no, I don't. I don't think it's live. Like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, no way! We can see the YouTube. We got forty people. Nah, on, I, I think it. Yeah, I think yeah. it is, bro. I mean, just send me a screenshot. And yeah, it's mm. nice on YouTube. Oh, yeah. I'm on YouTube. Yeah, it's just not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. What's live? Your screen. Uh, I let I mean screen. I let me screen is live. Oh. Yeah, smart so space full screen is live on mine right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the for the people tuning in on the live, no, that was a choice. We're, gonna, we're gonna start at ten past, just waiting for a few more people to join. Um, Inshallah, yeah. Like we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, uh, uh, Omar, how's it looking on the site? Is it okay? Yeah, I've just done the nastiest redirect ever, but it's fine. Um, I'm applying it. <laughs> it's live, so. Um, can the can the guys on uh, the live stream uh, on YouTube just? Uh, Give us a thumbs up if you can hear everything clearly, if the sounds all right. Uh, Omar, uh, let us know when it once is deployed, inshallah. Then yes, it's probably deployed. It should be working now. Okay, perfect. So anyone who visits deendevelopers.com slash live stream should now be getting pointed to the YouTube. Okay, perfect. Hang sound okay. is funny. Everyone's saying sounds funny. I mean, you're saying YouTube works, but the website doesn't. Okay. Uh, is the sound funny? Is it is it not coming through okay? I think it's coming up, but it's um slightly robotic, so it might be a um connection issue. Uh I mean what's your what's your internet who's your internet provider? <laughs> Everyone's saying they sounds good now. Okay, okay, sounds sick. Good. okay alhamdulillah. We'll, 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 we'll start inshallah. I didn't know it was live, I'm not gonna lie until like two minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll start inshallah. Okay. Uh, Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I wanted to say a big thank you and jazakallah khair to everyone tuning in to the live stream, um, tuning into our first ever remote hackathon uh, showcase. And inshallah, you guys can take some real benefit from here today, inshallah, and hopefully take inspiration from what the teams have built. Um, the teams have been working hard over the past few days. Uh, to build apps and products around our project themes. The first theme being, um, the first project theme being Ramadan at home. How, how can we make the most of this Ramadan in isolation? And secondly, key workers and the wider community. What can we do as people who work in tech to make the lives of NHS staff easier? And again, like I said, inshallah, you guys can take real inspiration from what the teams have done today. Secondly, I wanted to say a big thank you to the teams. Uh, Wallahi, what you guys have achieved in just a matter of two days a matter of a few days is nothing short of amazing. And wallahi, it has been an honor and a privilege for us team developers to see your progress over the past few days in bringing your ideas to life. To think that just on Friday night at the start of this hackathon, for a lot of you, you didn't even know one another. There was no idea, no brand, no product, and no commits against any code base. But today, alhamdulillah, 
Monday evening, we have all of that there. Even though some commits were only like 10 minutes ago, but we have we have everything there. Um, and once 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 the Dean developers team were, with, with your check-ins over the weekend and whatnot, uh, looking through your code and seeing your products, Allah, we've been absolutely blown away by what you guys have achieved. And what you guys have achieved is the epitome of what Dean developers is about, about bringing together people, like-minded individuals like yourselves, to come together and build products and apps that can benefit the Ummah and the wider community, as well as empowering working professionals and showing them that the skills that they already possess, the skills that they've learned at work, those developer skills, those analyst skills, those design skills, those product skills, with all of those skills, we can all start our own uh, projects of Khair and contribute to projects of Khair. All it takes is a little bit of time, the right intentions, and some passion to bring your ideas to life. So, some advice from Dean Developers. Uh, firstly, for the people listening, inshallah, listen attentively to the presentations and please do take inspiration from, from, from what the teams have done and what they've achieved in just a few days. And secondly, to the teams, uh, well, like once again, what you guys have achieved in the, in the matter of a few days is honestly crazy. Please do keep up this motivation and this, and this passion and this zeal and try your best to push out these products um, by Ramadan, inshallah. And Inshallah, uh, what, we'll, what we'll be doing is giving you guys personalized feedback and just saying, saying thank you on a personal level in the, in, in the next coming days. But for now, Inshallah, uh, to kind of talk through the structure for the day and what's going what's gonna to be happening over the course of the next few hours, Inshallah. Uh, hopefully not too long because people have been up since last night pushing and, and working. They want to give you guys an early night uh, so you guys can rest up for work tomorrow, Inshallah. Uh, but each team, we have five teams who are going to be presenting. Each team has a 10 minute presentation followed by a five minute Q&A, which we're going to open up. Um, and then we're going to take a short break for Maghrib at 8.15, inshallah, 8.15 p.m. And then we're going to, we're going to come back at 8.40 p.m., inshallah. And with that, I'd like to pass it to team one, inshallah, if they could uh, present their screen and show us what they've built. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share my screen. Give me a second. Can everybody see that? Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Salam alaikum, everyone. Um, so, introducing uh, my blue saber, and as the um, tagline suggests, discover daily discounts for your days in blue. Uh, um, a quick introduction to the team. So, I'm product and marketing Yam Yasmin. Um, our technical team, so Rizwan, um, Russell, and Mustafa, and our creative person, Musa. Um, I'm going to dive straight into the brand mission which is uh, reimagine discount deals in a way for healthcare employees to enjoy a fulfilling employee deal saver experience through an app platform. Um, and of course, you know, the question is, how did we get there? What did we actually build and how will we scale it? Um, and at this point, I'd also like to thank you for the opportunity to actually do something for the community, which was pretty good. Um, and also just a big thank you to everyone in healthcare, which are, they're all doing an amazing job. So how did we get there? So originally we had the Dean Developers team give us a pain point um, about the lack of kind of consistency in discounts and deals. But we then um, tapped into sort of our own networks of people that we know that work in the NHS. So we asked a NHS nurse, a mental health practitioner and a porter. Uh, and it was kind of a universal feedback really. There's nothing that's uh, consistent across the board but there is something that exists, which I'll go into, um, and that's a physical book and a card which has a points-based system. So something like this, all of them would benefit from. Um, and what we did was we just built some personas. So I guess we wanted to know who we were actually building the product for and service for, uh, and these are work in progress. So um, naturally it's, it's good to understand kind of, you know, what the age ranges were, are, what kind of their economic and, kind of their working class backgrounds or class backgrounds are um, and we can implement that into the way we build design or how we market the product to them so that's just a bit of an overview for you there and so how did we identify the market so our current competition was the blue light card which is what one of our nurses mentioned that she uses and I'll go into that in a second but generally we wanted to target people with um kind of low financial income and low, lower band NHS employees. Um, I think people who potentially could really rely on the system uh, and really enjoy discounts. So, you know, getting a coffee every day is pretty expensive. So having your local business down the road who has like, who's able to submit these kind of deals as well would be really good. Um, 
and the age range was between 18 to 60 but I think naturally what would happen is we'll probably have some onboarding issues with people that are not very tech savvy and maybe people from kind of because we spoke to somebody that was 45 and who's not that tech savvy and works in the NHS so wouldn't really unless we onboarded them properly to use to use the whatever system we choose at this point um we yeah we could we could direct the product that way and also it's open up to everyone in the UK and um obviously all genders and so we did a bit of a SWOT analysis for the blue light card. This is more of a business SWOT analysis, and I'm not going to go into all of it, but I'm going to tap into um, a key threat that we, we sort of looked at, which was the lack of local businesses submitting deals. So at the moment, it's kind of very focused on big retailers and, you know, like um, uh, like big coffee chains and that sort of stuff. So it would be really good if we could take that threat and turn it into an opportunity in whatever platform we chose at this point. So yes, uh, we decided to build a platform uh, for NHS staff to receive daily deals. It's accessible and it's through an app. And we decided that for the MVP, we needed to build an interface that lists deals, an API endpoint that pulls the NHS deals from the NHS website. So they've got a list of um, national deals that are applicable to everyone. So that's kind of our starting point uh, for, for the content as well. Um, types of filter categories so people can filter through kind of like transport or food or whatever um, and a search functionality because you know you don't want to also scrape through three loads and loads of deals just to find the one that may have been advertised on social media or something so a very basic um, kind of app user flow for this um, download the app there's three ways that you can potentially choose a deal which is search for a deal um, you can either choose a category and then scroll for deals or you can directly scroll for deals choose the deal that you want, and then it lands you onto the browser um, of the app, and then you can redeem it through your NHS ID. And then that would be our landing page. So depending on how we acquire the customer, uh, it's a one-page landing page, um, key content being, you know, what is what is my blue saber? What's it for and how does it work? Uh, and then we actually, we, well, we did the name after. So we, we wanted something that was clear and explanatory. Um, and blue is very significant for healthcare. Uh, Saver is very explanatory in terms of discount-based app, a discount-based app. Um, and also my makes it more of a personal tool. So we're not really like only just kind of promoting the brand, but yeah, you know, we're, we're kind of new to the market, if that makes sense. Um, we didn't really want to choose the NHS service manual because I think we could, we wanted to keep the door open for it to potentially expand into like private healthcare and I don't know, other key workers. So limiting ourselves to, to to just building it based on the NHS service manual would yeah would not give us big scope in the future um but the tone of voice yep a very sort of warm approachable and friendly and then we chose a color palette that expands um that sort of reflects into um band uniforms and we just chose a really popular google font that's used in healthcare so that then helped us to build an app wireframe, look at kind of, you know, the landing page content design, um, and that's work in progress. Like, we've got to be honest, our landing page isn't completely um, to the standard that we want it, and that's something that we, we need to do after this. So how did we build it? I'm going to pass this over to the development team who will walk you through a bit of a demo of the product itself. Uh, team? Okay, I'm going to screen share if that's cool. My first time trying to screen share, so uh, I think, Yasmin, I think you need to take yours off and then we can switch over to mine. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> I wish I knew how to do that. <laughs> um, should be the button at the bottom, I think, where it says share screen. If you click on that, we're looking. maybe it'll turn it off or something. I mean, it's not a presentation if you don't have it. Sorry about that. Oops. <laughs> Is it at the top? The orange button or something. Uh, no, because this is all I can see. Oh. Uh, a little help, guys. <laughs> close the close the Google Chrome, and then I think Zoom should pop up. No. If, if you close all your tabs, you need to go to your Zoom app. Then stop the presentation. The one that started the presentation, uh, the Zoom thing, can stop it or reclaim it. And stop it. Okay. Can somebody do that, please? Yeah, there we go. Gonna work. Nice. All right. Uh, I'll try share screen my. 
Okay. Uh, there you go. Right. Can you guys see it? Uh, yeah, looks good. Uh, right. Okay. So yes, I haven't opened it yet, but I'm going to. Right. So we have a splash screen. It takes a second to load, and this is basically the main page of our app. Um, like uh, Yasmin has mentioned, we've tried to keep it nice and simple. We just got one page with all the offers. Um, there's a lot of offers. There's like, I think, <laughs> a good 300. Um, and yeah, scrolling through all that is almost, you know, it's very, very tiresome. So obviously, uh, some of some of our features include being able to uh, sort them by or filter them by categories. So if I click on transport, I want to show the transport ones, supermarket, supermarket, and then if you want more than one, you can have more than one showing up. Stuff. Um, there's also the search feature as well. So um, if you want specific. There you go, specific offers, they'll come up, um, and so on. And we also have the ability to bookmark uh, features. Um, so if I was to close the app, open up again, and I'll remember which ones you've bookmarked. Um, and lastly, we also have the feature to be able to share um, the uh, offers. So if you've got another NHS staff you want to send something, uh, send an offer to, then you can just basically post them. Um, it won't work on the emulator because uh, restrictions and stuff. But on a proper phone, you'll be able to be taken to whichever app you want to use to share the um, the offer. So, uh, in terms of what it's built with, in terms of stack and stuff. So, if we start with the front end, it's uh, basically a Flutter app. Um, a reason why we chose Flutter is because it's used uh, very very useful for uh, building MVPs uh, because. Uh, just like Xamarin and React Native, it's uh, a cross-platform framework. So it lets you basically build uh, mobile apps quite quickly on both platforms. Um, and just to show you an example, I've got the Android version up. Um, Android emulator is really heavy, so it might be tiny bit slow. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's exactly the same. Um, it tries to copy the native kind of feel, so it kind of tries to feel Android-ish on the Android side. and iOS on the iOS side. Um, so um, also, uh, this would technically work on a tablet as well, but um, we don't really tend for it to work on a tablet, but I guess it's a side feature. Um, but yeah, as I said, built with Flutter. Um, and for the back end, it's using an AWS cloud infrastructure. Um, we're storing the offers in the if I remember correctly, uh, um, I can speak about it. So, oh, yeah, sure. yeah. Um, so in the back end, it's running off AWS. Um, the database is on DynamoDB, which is serverless, so it's quite cheap. Um, and the API is on API Gateway. Um, and API Gateway hits a Lambda, so like a serverless function, um, which then calls uh, DynamoDB to retrieve the offers. Um, this all makes it quite cheap because it's all serverless, so um, it's not like you're not paying um, well, for every second that the server's running. You only pay for uh, when the API is hit, and then you only pay for the retrieval of data. Um, also, to keep the offers updated, daily there's a cron job to um, look through the NHS site and see if there's any new offers available. Um, that's about it. Cool. Uh, let me share again. But can somebody switch that over? Okay, cool. Yeah, um, and so we actually did a bit of product feedback as well. So on Saturday evening, we spoke to a junior doctor and um, he really liked the fact that it was quite minimalistic and easy on the eye. Um, he also suggested that some location services for um, sort of local deals. So we, we sort of have that in mind. And also um, an interesting point that he, he said was about a sign in and login. So he specifically mentioned Apple. Um, I suppose for at this point in time, you use your NHS ID to redeem the offer when you go onto the landing page, but in the future, for data purposes and lots of you know we can we can get a lot more out of actually having single accounts and seeing seeing how people are actually behaving on the app so that's something that we can think about 
And so how will we scale it? So this is a very quick customer funnel um, or go to market or whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's just it literally just looks at kind of the different touch points at this point in time. So how will we acquire the customer? We've got a Twitter account um, set up. So we've got some great sort of feedback from there. Um, and then through that, we can do a bit of community building. So we could, we've could actually just looked into like what people are really saying about discounts. And, you know, we've um, we actually tweeted somebody and said, you know, here's a new app and he, he was looking for something that's quite specific to, to what, we, what we've created. Um, and then in terms of performance, it's all about user experience, speed, um, having the different search, search options uh, and um, having a variety of different deals. And then we've got to think about from a customer perspective, how would we, what's our sort of conversion element of this? And um, generally, you know, people will redeem offers, but then that gives us uh, opportunity to see what categories are performing well. And that's the stuff that will then go back into the app in terms of a technical perspective um, and, and build the right functions for the right touch point. Um, and also we've got the daily updates feature. So that keeps us, you know, once you've downloaded the app, how do we keep the person using the app all the time? You know, how, what if they lapse? What's then, so what, what do we do after that? So think about remarketing opportunities um, and um, yeah, updated content all the time and that's our twitter account so you can go and have a look i suppose we could have done a bit more but in terms of time um that's that's what we've got at the moment so yeah give us a follow please uh, and then in terms of features um i'm just going to move this um so we need to fit, finish the bookmarking feature and have a separate tab for that um where users can access the bookmarked offers um, a feature that allows uh, users to submit their own offers uh, a feature for offers based on location uh, and also potentially build a sign-in feature. And that's it. Um, does anybody have any questions? Or feedback? Well, hi. Uh, we have a question from the live stream uh, from uh, Sister Salma. Mm -hmm. uh, she asks, uh, if your plan is to target local shops offers, have you considered making filter by location and MVP? I guess this is more for the okay. devs. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll speak. Um, so yeah, we that was mentioned to us in the feedback. We didn't initially think about it, but that's definitely something we think about. Um, at the moment, the NHS offers don't really tell us where the locations are and stuff, but that's something we can absolutely look into um, using a bit of geo tagging and stuff. Um, but yeah. And there's two more questions at the back of that. Uh, again, uh, uh, regarding local businesses. Uh, so Zahid asks, uh, what is your strategy to get more local businesses on the app? And um, Sister Zainab again asked, how do businesses submit their information? Um, this, it's interesting, actually. So the strategy for how to get local businesses, I guess at this point, we are focusing on getting NHS users on there. But naturally, we'd have to think about kind of a channel stream. So we'd have to think about, like, how do we then expand potentially, like, landing pages or any content that we develop to create incentivize um, local businesses to be on there. And there is kind of that community element and giving back. And naturally, you would think that businesses would want to want to register on there. Um, and at the moment, um, users, um, local businesses can actually register onto the landing page. But our landing page is a little bit of work in progress, but they should be able to do that soon once we've developed the features. Don't know if our tech teams have anything to add there. No. I hope that answers your question. Um, anyone from the teams have any questions for for team one? Uh, no, no question, but just a point. Uh, Alhamdulillah, the team actually submitted the the application to the Play Store yesterday. So, inshallah, once it is reviewed, it will be going live, and iOS soon, inshallah, uh, should be should be submitted as well. Uh, so, mashallah, great work on that in order to get a functioning MVP out the door in just, just a matter of a few days. Uh, any, any other questions, particularly from the developers, if you want to know more about uh, serverless lambdas or anything like that? 
Don't all speak at once. Yeah. Okay, cool, Hamda. Uh, perfect. Jazak uh, Timon for your presentation and a very, very insightful presentation, Hamda. So Jazak uh, Inshallah, if you could now get Team Two to to jump on. So, can you hear me? I can see. Yes. 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 Can you can you see my screen? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'll start. So, um, everyone, um, so our, our team is called Shaiftar, and this is one of the quotes that we took to as an inspiration to start this whole project. So, Mr. Job Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever helps make the fast of a fasting part fasting person, he'll have the same reward as him without decreasing anything from the reward of the fasting person. Our mission at Shaiftar is to take to make food accessible to everyone, regardless of their financial or physical situation. Due to COVID-19, families are suffering from financial, physical and social isolation. Charities are unable to feed people. However, charities still want to help. But there isn't a unified platform that will help them manage this. So this is where we come in. We made a very simple platform. User requests the food on the platform. The food, the food center receives this request and makes the food. People go collect the food or volunteers go and pick up the food and deliver it to the person's house if they're vulnerable. So here's a quick demo of how it looks. So we go into the app. We register, we log into the app. And yeah, so we log into the app. And we select a place where we want to collect our food. We pick how many packs we want, if we want collection or delivery, and the time slot we want. And that's it. We confirm, and the food is ready to pick up. And essentially, like, that's all it is. It's very simple. You go pick up the food, and that's it. Our target audience. Our target audience are the most vulnerable people. We're looking at elderly people, self-isolating families, and people who are financially and physically vulnerable. We looked at a few competition out there. There's a lot of people that are trying to do similar things, trying to do really good stuff. And so we thought we go through some of these, some of these um, charities and organisations that are trying to do similar things that we were trying to do. So we picked out uh, Fair Share. Fair Share is a charity that helps encourage local food sharing. Their aim is to tackle food waste. However, they, they only give food to other charities. They do not give food to individuals. The next one is Share the Meal. Share the Meal is an international organization. It's part of United Nations food, um, World Food Program. And Share the Meal is a charity that allow, who allow people to feed those who are in need and they basically donate money so that they can use that money to feed others however this is mainly in poor third world countries and do not usually work with local um, organizations to feed po local providers um, communities and the last one is trussell group they're a big one in london um, they support a network of food banks and provide food, emergency food and support to people in poverty and in need. You have to go to the food centres to get the food. There's no delivery service. And sometimes you, some food centres require you to um, have food vouchers. So how are we different? So we're a digital platform. That means we can scale up much quicker. We don't require manual volunteers. We don't require anyone to actually scale up our ordering system. We don't need a premises. We provide food directly to individuals and we provide delivery services for those in need. We don't require food vouchers or any form of ID. We don't want any red tape to be a barrier to those who need a meal. We want to connect local co charities and local organizations to their local community. And this is one of our USPs. Like we want the local charities to be helping their local communities. 
Um, our go-to market strategy. Our market strategy is very, very simple. We want to start by onboarding charities and collection points. We then promote this throughout the social media, targeting those who are very vulnerable, trying to get things to the people that need it through word of mouth. We have already law, uh, we already partnered with a London charity called Lonely Orphans, who will be helping deliver the food from the collection points to those who are extremely vulnerable. Our roadmap. In the future, we want to iterate things on what we've already done. We want to be able to allow individuals to den donate food to collection points, allow people to donate for those who are vulnerable, and also connect charities with those vulnerable people. So when they need financial or even social help, they can go to the right people who have been trained to solve their problems. And we also want to make this all autonomous. We want collection points to be able to sign up and verify automatically. This will allow us to go global very quickly and allow us to still ensure the safety and the hygiene of the food when delivered to, when when picked up by individuals after ramadan we don't want to we don't want to just stop we don't want this project to just be a ramadan project we want this to carry on so we want this to we want to make this accessible to everyone muslim and non muslim this this idea of giving people a meal when they need it is not just a ramadan idea we can make this a daily I thing that anyone can go and collect food. And lastly, I want to leave you with this quote. The Prophet he said, the best of you are those who feed others. So share your interest at shareiftar.org. And you can also follow us at Twitter at shareiftar. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Idea is is honestly absolutely amazing because in particularly in Ramadan, a lot of financial uh, a lot of financially vulnerable people rely on the mosques for food and for they they will they will be able to come from, from the from the 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 teams here. So can a person only request a meal if there is a person that can deliver it in um, that area? No, no. Um, you can request a meal and collect it yourself. We're encouraging actually collection first. We use time slots to stop overcrowding. So we have limited time slots for each thing. So we work with each collection point to make sure that each time slot um, is, we only t um, put enough deliveries so that there's no overcrowding in that area. Um, so we encourage um, collection. But if you are very vulnerable, then we have the option for deliveries and we have a charity working with us to help do that. Cool. Hello, Salam. Um, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, cool. Um, first of all, yeah, I just want to say, um, you know, well done on building such a sort of unique service, essentially. You know, to me, it looks like you've basically digitized food banks which um, sort of, you know, already sort of struggle as it is. So you, so you mentioned, obviously, a lot of the struggles that they have. Um, and, and this is a really fantastic opportunity to, re to really scale that and address that issue. Um, what I, I wanted to uh, mention was, um, have you thought about, because obviously it is such a sort of noble cause and, and something that you really get behind. So have you thought about an option where people can basically donate or, or contribute to these centres who are offering the food packs? Yeah, so um, we're, we're hoping to add in a dedicated page for each of our um, collection point and each of our charities that are helping so that we can basically take our audience and actually help them to do more good um, and to, for them to continue doing this. Because the, obviously, there's going to be financial strains, especially with donations going down recently. And so we want to keep helping them as much as possible. So we'll be working to look um to add new features in so that they can donate directly on the app and um, we can keep these things keep these incentives going uh there's a there's a question on the live stream uh there's quite a few around 
food hygiene. And I think uh, so one of the questions is uh, from Odessa, it's a brilliant idea. Naturally, with current climate, how do you guarantee hygiene when food is being donated by anybody and anyone? So we initially had this, uh, the initial idea was that anyone could donate for anyone. And we that was our first question, like how do we solve the hygiene problem? So what we've done is the collection points that we onboard, we make sure that they have a food hygiene um, inspection already done and that they are taking the necessary precautions with their staff and also with their uh, meals to make sure that they're prepared in a uh, in a acceptable manner that does not um, does not cause any um, risk or vulnerable to vulnerable people. And um, so, making sure protective gear and everything is worn when um, food is prepared, and we will be continuously monitoring this and um, making sure that this does not um, slack or or um, any any issues happen. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, I think just to clarify on that point, uh, it's not just anybody donating food, it's, it's particularly tied to mosques and food centres, and mosques and food centres give out food food anyway, so they naturally have good hygiene standards uh, and certificates and whatnot, so that's one way to to ensure that that, that stuff's um, going out well, uh, inshallah. Um, there's another question, uh, it's a great idea, mashallah, is the plan just to have an app and not a website? How will the elderly who struggle with tech download Tech download and access the app. So uh, this is a brilliant question. Um, we decided to go not build an app. We built a web app, so you can go to a website um, and f find that. Um, and we're trying to make accessibility as easy as possible. We're using um, Gov UK standards to make sure that the accessibility is as high as possible, so that anyone else, anyone who wants to use it and um, you without having to figure out loads of different things. Um, we also look working with charities to help train that and also provide um, explainer videos on how to go. And that sounds good. Uh, we'll take two final questions just from the from the thing. Uh, the live right. The first one There's is a question yeah, from, I think, uh, Sister Marwa. Uh, uh, around, uh, she says, this is a great initiative. However, how would you ensure that the people ordering are generally vulnerable or required? and or require financial physical support? Um, I think we just have to go by trust. Like, we, if we put in barriers in place, we'll be stopping those who actually need the food. And I think it's up to the person who is ordering to, to be honest and to t take the food if they need it. And if they don't need it, not to um, think. But we will be monitoring this for cyber security essentials, um, security attacks or anything like that, um, just to make sure that there isn't like spam orders coming through. We have email verification. We also have um, additional verification, such as um, phone number verification if, if, um, if you do an order. Um, and these are the little barriers that we put in place that we can use to stop stop. Um, people from doing spam orders, but also not stop people who are actually vulnerable and need this, need this, need their need a meal for that day. And, the, uh, and and then the final question is, uh, what's the tech stack? And then we'll move on in chat. So um, we used React JS um, on the front end, and we use um, Laravel PHP in the back end. So we have a API um, a microservice model um, where all of our API call handles on the back end and all the front end um, just takes care, care of all of the designs and the UI user experience. Okay, Alhamdulillah, perfect. Jazakallah uh, team too for your presentation and, and a very, very noble idea uh, to, provide, to provide food for the most financially vulnerable and vulnerable during Ramadan, during lockdown. Uh, so inshallah, can we have team three please presenting, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, can you guys hear me? Alaikum salam, yes. Uh, my name is Wuhan, uh, one of the developers for On I just wanted to start off by saying a big thank you to my mom who's sitting watching at home. Uh, okay, forgive me, that's a lie, she doesn't speak English. Um, but for real, thanks to Ibrahim and the rest of the Dean Developers team for providing us with such a great platform. Uh, may Allah reward you. I mean, I just want to quickly introduce my team. Um, so we have myself and Mohammed on the front end working in React, Muad and Usman on the back end working in Python and Flask and Iman on UI and project management. 
And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Iman, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Um, so, welcome to our project on Khair. Um, as we all know, this Ramadan is going to be very different. There will be no tarawih in the masjid, no lessons or reminders um, in the masjid again, and no communal iftar gatherings. Many of us are asking ourselves the following questions. How will I keep my Iman high? How will I keep up a level of community? Most people are turning towards live Islamic lectures and lessons to solve this. We are all receiving many WhatsApp notifications and social media notifications on what events are taking place at the world. However, this can be difficult to keep track of. Also, how do those who do not have the right contact or follow the right people on social media hear about these events? As a solution, we have come up with On Khair. On Khair is an online website which showcases all upcoming Islamic live events and lectures. This website allows users to discover events held by new organizations they wouldn't otherwise have heard of. It also allows them to search for events and filter based on their own categories. Users would be able to rest assured that only verified organizations will be able to post events on the website. Our target audience is English speaking Muslims who are interested in learning more about their religion through the lessons and events, and also Islamic institutions who organize these events and are looking to advertise these to a large target audience. Now, what's out there currently? There is currently a website called Quarantine uh, that has a very similar concept, however, it's not currently active. There are um, social media pages that do this and post these um, live events. However, it can be difficult to search through and find. And there um, are multiple websites such as Muslim Central that have um, lectures, uh, but they don't cater for advertising live events in the Muslim community. Now, yesterday we started, um, we created our social media accounts. We created Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, and already, alhamdulillah, on uh, Twitter we have over 80,000 followers. Um, over now. And um, on Instagram as well, we have over 45 followers. Um, and people, these are some of the comments that we've received. So, alhamdulillah, there's people have given us positive feedback and there's clearly a need for this. Um, now, the steps that we've taken, um, that we are taking currently to roll this out, uh, we are adding webs um, enough events on the website. Um, we below. And we are contacting Islamic organizations in order to get them to create accounts um, on our website and start posting their events. Now for a quick demo of the website. The website is onkhayr.com. Um, you've got the ability to search over here. And as you can see, all the events are displayed. Um, it tells you what the title is, the share, the timing and the date. And over here you can see the links to how to access the lives. Then if you want to post an event, you would need to create a website first. Um, and if you don't have um, a, an account, then you can create an account. It's already in there. Okay. All accounts will be verified by us. Now our roadmap. We want to keep this going even after Ramadan, inshallah. That's the plan. Um, so that it can benefit people in the long run. The features that we want to add. Uh, we want to allow users to be able to place event requests um, and for us to then be able to check them and then post them on the website. 
allow additional filtering so that you can filter by category, by madhab, um, by additional filtering necessary, such as location. Um, and our calendar view, so users can see what events are, are taking place and sort them by date. Have the ability to send event reminders by SMS or by email. Favorite events for quick access, so that users can go back and see what events they favorited. And uh, we have the Islamic organizations admin portal, so when Islamic organizations sign up, we want to add the functionality of being able to edit events that they've previously posted. And I will open up the floor for any questions. How did you guys think of such a great product? Um, well, we basically thought of, um, we, we basically, Sorry, we um, initially thought of what the pain points are that people have uh, around Ramadan. Um, so, and we thought about ourselves as well and what are the main things that we struggle with. And live events is a big thing out of this lockdown that's come out. So we thought to put this all together would be really, really useful. And we've also spoke, we also spoke to a few people and got some feedback. Uh, what's the what's the tech stack? What did you guys build this in, and how did you go about building it? Okay, so we've got um, React JS on the front end, uh, pretty standard stuff, and Flask, uh, uh, Python and Flask on the back. Um, my mom's not watching, but Mohammed's is, so I don't know if you can talk about the progressive stuff you just done, the last minute push. Yeah. Um, uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, Hey, how is that? Hi, uh, just, just shouting out my mom. Um, so yeah, basically, um, with regards to this app, um, this web app, um, we decided that it would it would be best if we uh, made it progressive as well, so progressive web app. So rather than actually like until the point where we launch it on the app store, we have the ability, you know, to add reminders and stuff like that on the actual app later on down the line. For now, um, anybody can go onto our website on khair.com. And um, if they're on Android, as soon as they go to the website, there'll be a pop-up that comes up, says add to home screen. They can add it to their home screen and it will act as an app on their phone. So anytime they want to just check what lectures are happening online, that are happening live right now, um, you just go onto the app, um, the progressive web app on, the, on your mobile phone and it should be there. So Alhamdulillah, we managed to do that um, the little time that we've had. So um, we're pretty proud of that as well. Yeah, and also, um, uh, Iman, can I share my screen? Yeah, of course. So, uh, in terms of the back end, uh, we've just been using a simple uh, Flask app. And some of the endpoints that we sort of documented on Apiary was just uh, so that if there was a, uh, people want to understand how we work in the back end, it was a lot easier to understand look at, um, from documentation. So, if a user sends a post request and tries to call the box over, um, what they should get back is an auth token so that they can send um, subsequent requests with that in their headers for the put and post and update ones. And then once they log in, they should get a similar one, except with a different message. But when you're sending a get request, um, there are no headers except for the content type, and you should just get back a list of all the lessons. And when you create it, you have to add the authorization uh, header in your request, and you should get a two hundred one created. And same with the update and delete, but you get a two hundred four, and but you still need to have the the bearer tokens. Um, so obviously, I called the mock server to get the responses, but by doing production and nine out of ten times when you do a live demo, things go wrong. So I just uh, only about that. It's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> Hi, I've got one quick question. Um, have you guys reached out to any institutions that are sort of um, releasing, you know, loads of live lectures to see if they can sort of become early adopters or early advocates for the service? Uh, we've currently got a thing going with the Muslim Youth Network in East London. Uh, they've given us a few events to uh, add on there. We've got a couple already there. Um, so far, we're kind of just um, opening up to the public to post events, inshallah. Well, when I say public, um, institutions. 
Okay. Yeah, we're in the process of contacting organizations to become early adopters, like you said, mentioned. Uh, there's a question on the live stream. It says, uh, from Sister Zainab, this is a great idea, mashallah. How would the team manage in the short term with manually adding events? Is it possible to filter by children's events in the short term? That isn't something we've actually considered yet, but we're actually going to have a roadmap meeting uh, after the after this live stream is over, inshallah. And we're going to talk about what our next steps will be, and that is something we can consider, inshallah. Mm. Uh, um, also, um, uh, we can imagine that a lot of people have, um, you know, brilliant ideas and suggestions uh, going forward on features that we could add on to this. Um, so inshallah on the website there's going to be an uh, ability to um, uh, contact us from where you can put in suggestions as well um, so that we can add it into our roadmap as well inshallah. Uh, this question here from Sadiq Dorosat. Uh, may have you mentioned but can a user register for an event through the app which informs the event organizer? That isn't a feature we have right now, but that's a great idea. And again, something we can talk about you know, during the roadmap, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Um, and then there's a, there's a very positive comment here uh, from Zaid. It says, Allah Mabarak, this is amazing. And during this time, it is exactly what we need. I was becoming flustered with all the notifications of different lives. This will help my schedule. So I hand some positive feedback. Um, and there's a question from Marwa Khan that says, Mashallah, it's an amazing idea. How will you compile all the live halakas and sessions which are coming? Do you have a submission form or is it directly via the API? Uh, so as Iman was demonstrating, we have a sign-up uh, form for institutions and masjids. Uh, it's not um, for the general public yet. We will, we will consider opening it up to general public and potentially using tech to kind of leverage that as well. So maybe some kind of scraping system, but we haven't gone into too much detail about that yet. Okay, mashallah, sounds, sounds great, sounds very amazing and a very useful, useful web app to use during Ramadan, inshallah. Uh, so inshallah, we'll move smoothly on to team four. Um, team four, inshallah, Turqan. I mean, how is he not going to continue after that presentation, right? See, he's, he's taking a moment to catch his breath. One second. Are you just asking for one second? Shall we move on to team five? Uh, yeah, inshallah, we can do that. Yes, uh, let's do that, inshallah. Team five? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, uh, let me share my screen. Okay, uh, assalamu alaikum. Um, so we, uh, I just want to... Uh, Okay, so we wanted to come up with a uh, a way to um, help the Muslims in this Ramadan memory isolated and uh, in, a, in, a, in a fun way. And uh, we came up with this idea just before we um, did our pitch. Uh, and the team that we had, I just want to reach a shout out to all the amazing um, team members that I had. There was Adnan, Al-Kib, Abshir, and myself, Arthur, and we kind of called ourselves the A-team as a result as a result of that. Um, so let me go into the to the app. Uh, so it's called Ilm Quiz. Um, it's basically um, what did we want to do? Basically, we wanted to bring uh, Muslims together in a fun and educational way. Um, and uh, initially, especially in this Ramadan, when we're all isolated, uh, find a way to bring ourselves together as a as a nation uh, as well for a for a moment uh, during the day where we can um can uh, just be together and uh the reason why we wanted to do that was because basically during lockdown um we are separated from each other when we would normally at uh, during ramadan we'll be together um increasing our knowledge uh meeting being together and uh improving our spirituality 
uh, and Iman as well. And uh, without the interaction, we wanted to find a way that we could uh, have a moment in the day uh, where we can uh, do this, uh, even if it was in a, a virtual way, basically. And uh, we thought that, well, during Ramadan, in the last hours, just before Maghrib, uh, when people are looking for things to do to take their mind off food, then uh, we'll do this thing called uh, uh, a live quiz. So it's going to be at a uh, set time just before our Maghrib. Um, and uh, I'll uh, show you it's what it's going to be. Basically, it's uh, a live quiz. So at the sixth time each day, we'll present a set of questions, Islamic questions, where they can uh, then answer them um, and uh, get points for it. The quicker they answer the question, the more points they get. Um, they'll have about 10 questions uh, each day. Um, and hopefully, because uh, it's all live and all at the same time, then everyone together will be able to be at least participate, feel that they're together. Uh, be able to participate in a, in a fun way and hopefully, inshallah, uh, learn something uh, as well. So uh, who are we uh, primarily targeting? It will uh, primarily be Muslim parents and their, and their children um, and uh, their young siblings as well. Um, we don't know of any direct competitors. I mean, there was, uh, it was kind of based slightly. Uh, we, there were things like Live Quiz and uh, I think a couple of other apps out there which uh, uh, have uh, a similar sort of concept, but it wasn't uh, Islamic based. And uh, that's what we wanted to, to do. And there's lots of other online quizzes out there, but nothing in a, in a kind of a live or interactive kind of manner. Um, so this is the app. Let me quickly see if I can show you uh, what it would look like. So you've got the app, you have the countdown approaching the, the time for when the, the app is. Usually, I would say, for example, 7.30. We don't want to do it not just before Maghrib and people are completely brain starved. Uh, we'll show them the rules, and get 10 questions. And then they start, and then they quickly answer each question as they as they get it. Uh, um, so uh, this is kind of an early uh, prototype that we had. I'll let this go through. So there were going to be other features that we were going to add on top of this, uh, but I'll go through that roadmap in a, in a little while. So there you'll see that they, uh, you get the score uh, and you get uh, sort of the, this other score is kind of uh, based upon how quickly you did, uh, did it as well. So uh, to go to market, we, uh, we're almost uh, there with the app, um, um, but we'll hopefully test it with the critical uh, network of people like uh, yourselves. Um, and then once uh, we get some feedback, then we'll roll it out to, to others, because uh, I think it's got to be uh, polished before we can um, roll it out to, to lots of other people. Um, and then we are uh, looking for sign-ups. Um, we are through a website. We've almost got the, the launch page ready. And then we'll kind of take sign-ups uh, through that and let them know once the, the app is ready as well. Um, so we've got various uh, all our social media accounts set up. Um, we've got uh, do a blitz over WhatsApp groups. So we've got affiliated with local mosques, um, and we can uh, use their platform to promote it. Um, and then we've got also in groups with other representative mosques that hopefully we can leverage as well, and have uh, hopefully pod podcasts and YouTubers uh, uh, use them to to promote the app as well. So um, as the, the roadmap, we've got the, the, uh, the MVP there, uh, which basically sh shows the questions, timers, and uh, shows the scores. Uh, in the near future, we'll hopefully, inshallah, have a, a leaderboard where we show all the people who took part in that session and see, show you how you graded, uh, how you rated against uh, everybody else, um, uh, and uh, also show the leaderboard on the, uh, the website as well. Um, and then after the other little features that we could do is to um, show, well, as you finished each question, how many other people 
also voted for each of the questions as well. Little little touches like that, and also add in administration of the website so we can uh, manage the users and uh, questions. Uh, at the moment, a lot of that is just currently through scripts uh, and stuff that I've got. Um, and then um, it's uh, uh, on iOS um, and uh, and uh, Android. Um, and we'll also ensure I have a, a web app. But primarily, the first launch will be on iOS. And in long term, once we've got traction, uh, look out to get sponsorship from charities where they can sponsor a night, uh, et cetera. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we're still working out the rest of the, uh, the roadmap uh, from that as well. Um, so at launch, we'll have the, the app, what you saw uh, there. And then beyond uh, things like this, which is uh, what I was showing, where we can show where, what the people vote is uh, and what the leaderboard will look like as well. Um, and the tech stack, uh, does any of the other guys want to go through that? Otherwise, I can do it. So basically, it's Sketch for the design. Uh, the back end is Firebase and uh, Firestore with uh, hosting on Netlify and we've got good like Google Ana Analytics to, to monitor and uh, to get some insights on there. Front end is Nux, then PWA, and uh, it's using Xamarin for the, uh, the mobile app with C Sharp. Um, yeah, well, we should, inshallah should have uh, the launch page ready and uh, we can be able to sign up and uh, send you when it's ready. Any um, any questions? Sorry, that was a bit of a rapid presentation, just in time for moderate. Um, yeah, just a quick one for. Oh, sorry, Adnan, you want to go? Uh, sorry, uh, this is Adnan, one of the developers of this idea. And uh, first of all, it's lovely to have to um, the Dean developers um, team just for facilitating this. Uh, Marshall, I didn't realize how productive we could actually be in two days. And what we managed to um, achieve uh, we've been blessed with a great team um but yeah i think there's so much potential going forward um in terms of i'm just looking at the youtube comments as well in terms of i think people really want to play with each other or play against each other especially families so there's so many yeah. ideas i'm getting right now 100 percent, and i think uh, a lot of people will be able to give us ideas in terms of um the features as well but obviously along the road we'll we'll look to um ask people to contribute uh, in that regard I would also like to say Jazakallah khair to um, everyone at Dean Developers for putting um, the teams together and putting me on such an awesome team as well. Um, and when we do go live and we have a leadership uh, board and everything, everyone watch out. They do call me <laughs> Afshir, the quiz master. Um, so you'll see me at the top of the uh, leaderboard all the time. So sorry to break your hearts. I'll sure. put the questions in, so I might beat you there. <laughs> um, uh, so, Alhamdulillah, it, it, in terms of the prototype and the MVP, Mashallah, it looks, looks very, very polished and very good. Uh, in terms of launch and stuff like that, are you looking to launch soon? Uh, can you can you give us can you give the people on the YouTube comment comments? Yeah, yourself? yeah. So, in terms of as you guys saw from the video, um, we've we've got the MVP, and we know that it's a functioning app. Uh, but in terms of releasing the features, we're just literally going to polish the UI according to the designs and also um, work uh, tirelessly, actually, before Ramadan to get those features in. And hopefully we'll, um, I can't promise that we'll, we'll, we'll have it ready for launch by the first day of Ramadan, but inshallah, um, in between or a week or so in, um, we, we'll have something for you guys. But what you can do is follow our social media so at Ilm Quiz everywhere, so Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, um, and that's where we'll be posting um, our updates. But also, um, once Abishir has sorted out the back end, um, if you go to ilmquiz.app and register your email address there, we'll literally notify you as soon as it's launched. And as soon as, as, as we frame up it. As soon as we pre it, I'll, 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 we'll see could uh, hook you up to the database, don't worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, just to add to that, um, so it's an MVP, Marshall, you're running on the phone. So I can actually even share my screen on my phone if you want to see it running live. Uh, but I will say to everybody at work as well that to develop um, an app, 80% of, of the work takes 80% of the time. And then the next 20% also takes 80% of the time. So, I mean, you create an app, you really got to polish it. You got to make sure that it's pixel perfect. 
So that's what the focus is going to be on for the next uh, few days. <laughs> and it's the smallest details that take the longest time as well. Yeah, and but it's going to completely, completely function on the phone at the moment, and um, we could realistically release this uh, in the next couple of days or so if we want to release this version, but I think we really, as a team, want to um, deliver the best that we can. Yeah, much love. Uh, we, we love to hear that. Uh, very polished, polished presentation and very polished MVP. Uh, there's some questions and some suggestions on the, on the live stream. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, this is great, Hamna. Uh, can a user generate Islamic quiz questions based on topics? Can a user generate the, the quiz questions? Yeah, yeah, based on, based on topics. So, um, I think one of the ideas that we had for a long term was um, different charities sponsoring a quiz. So you could actually, uh, maybe, because it's going to be one quiz per day, um, what we could have is uh, somebody sponsoring that quiz for that day, and it could be to a particular charity, for example, and then we could, um, uh, yeah, so they, do, they could uh, submit their questions like that. Yeah. Mashallah, sounds, sounds very good, sounds very good. Um, and then there was a suggestion around getting families to compete with one another. Uh, the comment is perhaps if families can play against each other in team, it could become more interactive. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, um, there's, there's a lot of potential. Um, we, can, we can even hook it up to TVOS um, if there are anyone who wants to jump on board as well and, and stick on the TV and get the whole family um, involved, you know? Yeah, and especially um, going beyond Ramadan, um, we, we're planning on having like uh, special uh, Juma quizzes, um, and then you know bringing in other Islamic events together and having questions around those. So in terms of scope, the app's got great potential. It's just about us um, putting in the time, getting the getting the initial uh, beta release out, and um, taking it from there. But of course, um, we'd love to engage with the audience as well. So if we connect. On social media and then we can just bounce ideas of each other and you know build really build a community around this and um, i saw some questions about the tech stack so um because the apps uh, cross-platform dwelling in xamarin uh, i've shared your suggestion of tv os actually um may be very possible because um there's no specific ios coding that's been done for here so it's it's fairly trivial to get this to launch under android and then tv os pops possibly in watch os as well so um there's a few options that we have to uh, get this across many, many platforms. Yeah, mashallah. As they say, the sky is the limit. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, uh, there's a final question from actually my uncle from Saudi Arabia. Uh, he says, uh, do they have quizzes covering different range of ages, like uh, meaning like quiz based on age and grade and whatnot? Yeah, so, we, could, we could certainly look at that in the future. Yeah, I was thinking that as well. Okay, alhamdulillah. Perfect, perfect. Sounds good, sounds good. Uh, so, uh, unless there's any other final comments from Team 4, we'll call it a wrap. Anyone you want to shout out? Yeah, I just want to shout out to the team again, Mashallah. It's been a fantastic team that I've here, and uh, I wish I had a team like that at work. <laughs> and uh, thank you again for Dean Developers for arranging all this. It's been my first hackers, and it's been an absolute pleasure, Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah uh, uh, Team 4, a very, very innovative and very cool way to spend the whole inshallah. Um, what we're going to do now is, sorry, someone speak? Sorry, it's the A team, not team five. Yeah, oh, sorry, it's A team, sorry, the A team. Uh, so what we're going to do now is, inshallah, we're going to break a little bit early for Maghrib because I think Maghrib has kicked in in London and a few more minutes uh, elsewhere, inshallah, and then we're going to we're gonna come back, um, come back at around 8.35, inshallah, because uh, we're breaking a little bit early. And then we still have two more presentations. We've still got team four to give us their presentation. And we have one very, very special presentation that one of the brothers from the core Dean Developers team has been working on with his friends uh, away from this hackathon, but over the weekend, uh, which he's going to present, inshallah. Uh, so please do join us back for that, inshallah. But we're going to break from Maghrib now. Uh, so do pray uh, and, and, and rush back, inshallah. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum. All right.
How you guys doing? Alhamdulillah. I'm doing good, you know. Alhamdulillah, a lot better than I expected. But mashallah, the the presentations have been immense, man. Subhanallah, very very good. Mashallah, the the the, the system with the animations, that that idea. <laughs> baraka for <fuqa>, baraka. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Subhanallah. Give it a couple minutes and then let everyone join up. Let me call Alami just to look at the screen back up and shout. give it a couple minutes inshallah and then we'll resume with the two presentations <clears throat> uh, Fakon, how's things on your side? Everything okay? Let me ping him on Slack. Um, yeah, the okay for now. Uh, okay, Alhamdulillah, good. We'll give it a couple minutes and then we'll. My connection's a bit shaky, to be honest. Yeah. But it's a bit of a metaphor, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
How are you guys finding the presentation so far? Listening to all the teams and the stuff like that. Really good, man. I think um, uh, team one they set the standard in terms of presentation and the level of research they've done and everything. Yeah, so, uh, definitely in inspiring. Um, so we'll have to revise something for when we launch. Yeah, <laughs> well, definitely learning points from from, from every single presentation and repeat. Yeah, I think to be honest, we added too much unnecessary detail. But um <laughs> No, I think I think it was perfect. Like if you were going to pitch for investment or something, that would be like perfect presentation. Because you covered everything. Uh thanks. Uh, yeah. No, I, 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 I agree with that, Alhamdulillah. It was a, it was a very good presentation, including everyone, mashallah, is uh, the caliber of presentations was, was very, very high. Very high, mashallah. Uh, okay, cool. It's, it's past 8.40 when we said we'll be back, inshallah. Maybe we'll give it another like, couple of seconds and then we'll start with, with uh, Team 4, inshallah, which we didn't go back to previously. And then we have one very, very special presentation at the end, inshallah, uh, which, which, uh, which will be good, inshallah. Uh, so yeah, uh, Furqan, are you ready to share your screen? Perfect. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Cool. Can you see your screen? Uh, yep, yep, you can see. All right, cool. I might as well present. All right, cool. Can you hear me? Uh, yep, we can hear you. We can hear you. All right, cool. All right, so first of all, the uh, caliber presentations beforehand can be a lot higher than what we've got here. They're all been amazing. It's amazing to see what uh, everyone's been able to do over the weekend. Um, we're a lot smaller of a team, so I'm Frakan, um, product designer. And then we had Jawad and Aziza. Um, I don't think the guys were able to make this call. Um, you know, Jawad's working for Twitter, you know, he's setting a benchmark standard for everyone, you know, he's working with the guys at San Francisco, like paving the way for everyone else, you know, in such an amazing company. But here I am. So talking about my, uh, our idea, Deeds at Home, which is uh, still a massive work in progress, but uh, I'll show you what we've done anyway. So the mission statement is, uh, um, yeah, we want to help Muslims commit themselves to Badr while still at home. So we know that the lockdown's going on, but it's such a blessed month, you know, and we wanted to continue this. Um, but w the problem that we're trying to solve is being at home. We've lost a lot of structure we would usually have during Ramadan. And we know it's harder to remain productive whilst at home due to the distractions around us. Um, I know personally, like uh, being at home, I get distracted very easily. Um, getting on your phone, you know, you can just sit on the sofa, watch TV, you know, especially when I'm at my mum's house, you know, like it's a lot easier to just um, lounge around and just um, take it easy whilst at home. There's no structure compared to when you go to like a mosque or like where it's a place to worship, you know what I mean? Um, like for me, when I was doing my dissertation at uni last year, I literally had to go to the canteen at work, um, literally to sit down on the last five days to actually start the dissertation and finish it the same week because I can't do work at home. And it's something, this is like structure is very important. And we know the month coming up is going to be very difficult. People don't have structure, you know. Um, everyone's very different, but for me, I need structure and we're trying to solve this. Um, so we want to help people maximize the reward while still still at home, and by basically um, creating an app that has a schedule for you, which is personalized. Um, so the market research, there's obviously uh, very popular apps that maybe do stuff like this, where you do have a schedule, right? Um, like Muslim Pro, uh, Simple Daily Deeds, uh, Reporting, Muslim Day, they're all very popular apps, but none of the uh, checklists and structures are personalized. Like, you even get like handouts from like your mosques or like 
on WhatsApp groups, you know, like, oh, here's a really cool list of stuff to do, but it's not personalized. Like for me, um, what I like to do is pretty completely different to what you guys like to do, you know? Um, I personally like watching like YouTube videos or like lectures or like, I love listening to podcasts. I'm a massive podcast fan. Um, or like, uh, well, some, one person might just like to, you know, um, sit down and like read like recitation or like memorization. Everyone's different, you know? That's why like you can't just have one app with a set list of stuff to do, you know? Um, especially in 2020 where um, there's so much data available, like why can't things be personalized for you, you know? Um, so this is what, this is like the uh, prototype that we've like come up with um, uh, helped design. Um, so it's basically having a personal schedule. So hopefully you can add some structure whilst you're still at home. Um, so if it's like, I only have one hour available or I only have 15 minutes, you know, um, you know, there's no judgment whatsoever how you want to spend your time, but we want to help you at least um, spend a bit of your time more productively, you know. Um, you can spend one hour, two hours, but uh, we want you to generate a schedule that's personalized for you. If you like podcasts, you like reading, you like lectures, whatever it is, we're going to generate something more personal for you. Um, so like a schedule filled with like Islamic uh, uh, activities. Um, so, yeah, let me quickly show you... Um, our prototype as well um so this is like the main like home screen that you would arrive to so when i created the designs i want to keep it really simple and like um a hierarchy very clear of what what this is all about uh, minimal steps you know keep it like quite simplistic um so when they go to this site that is about like maximizing your rewards whilst you're indoors, it doesn't just have to be during Ramadan, but obviously this is like the most uh, pressing issue that's coming up. So the first thing you do is obviously create a schedule. And then you select how much your time you have. So this is like going to be a drop down for this instance. Let's say you have an hour. Um, so you select an hour um, and then you press uh, next. So then you select like what type of activities you want to do. If you like maybe Islamic history, like memorization, like you want to read some Quran or like repentance, it's really up to you. Um, but let's say for us instance, we've selected these two here, Islamic history and repentance. Like moving on to the next bit. So what format would you like? So you can select multiple formats you prefer. Like I said, um, this is just a mock-up. Um, it will be like expanded like further, but reading, in, listening, watching. So, like I said, I like listening and reading stuff. Um, and then you press finish. So, obviously, this is a prototype, so it's all static. Um, but you get a breakdown, like a clear breakdown of what this one hour is broken up to. Try to commit yourself to this one hour, right? So, listen to podcasts for 40 minutes and recitation for 20. And then you scroll down and you see what's inside this one hour. So, and then we've got another, we'll give you the podcast link or like for recitation. So, we're just aggregating this and making a list for you. And um, basically, in the future, hopefully, you'll be able to share your links with other people. Now, if you like that schedule, you'll be able to do it with other people as well, as in share the same link and they'll be able to do the same thing as you. So that's like the main prototype. Um, another thing was that uh, we want to have like a surprise, be like, say if you not sure what you'll do right now, uh, click surprise me and we can just generate your schedule, like random time, random subjects. So podcast 40 minutes, lectures 30 minutes, and recitation 20. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, I made sure that added up to one hour 30 as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is like personal schedules, uh, soften your heart. Again, um, this time we've got a YouTube video you can watch. Oh, cool. So you can click on that and that'll take you to YouTube and you can watch that and you come back to the app to do the next thing. Um, it's very flexible, it's very easy, nothing forcing you, um, you know, just want to just help add that extra structure, you know, we usually would go to like Trawi, like um, in the evening, why not use that time now to actually do something more productive that you would have been doing anyway. 
So that's the problem we was trying to solve. Um, so where, where are we currently? So obviously that's just a mock-up that I made, but the other guys have been doing the real hard work, you know. Um, so there's still front-end development and still needs to be finished. The uh, back-end database uh, needs to be hooked up to make the content dynamic. Um, because you know, like the bar that we had that says uh, this item will take 15 minutes, we need to work this out uh, using an algorithm basically to be like, oh, um, this recitation will take you 15 minutes. So we'll have to still figure this stuff out as well. Uh, but I'll still show you what we've got right now. So this was the first mock up. Um, it's all static right now. Um, doesn't look quite close to the website, but this was the first go and it has like your schedule. Um, and then right now we're trying to actually get close to the designs, but it's all static right now. Um, but we wasn't sure if we was gonna even present this, but um, we're glad we have presented it, but obviously uh, not a lot of the stuff's working. The other apps are a lot further ahead and they're a lot more incredible. Um, but yeah, that's where we are right now. Um, but we just want you to be more productive, especially at home, especially with that time you might have been spending uh, a do it going to the mosque for trial week, you know, try and like create your own schedule and put some structure in your life because um, someone like me needs a lot of structure. Um, so what's the launch plan? So we've got to finish off our development uh, work. So we are going to be launching hopefully during Ramadan, um, hopefully before the last 10 days. But um, like I said, um, everyone's got uh, other priorities as well uh, we don't want to put too much pressure we don't want anyone to burn out so we're going to try and aim to get this done during ramadan but again there's no commitments but um we want to soft launch it first you know so you can just share it out see get some feedback and then launch it to the, the public um so this hopefully we'll be able to get this done product roadmap so like I said, one thing we want to do is share your schedule. So we want, um, if you found like a really good lecture or a really good schedule that you really liked, oh, that was a really good 30 minutes I just spent. That was an awesome lecture. That was an awesome podcast. You know, let me put that in a WhatsApp group and like share it with people, you know. That's what we want to be able to do. Word of mouth is like one of the purest ways of um, marketing and communicating with people. Um, I love it when a friend recommends me a podcast, like it just gives you an extra edge, you know, like, you know, it's going to be good if it's coming from one of your mates, you know, um, time of capability. So maybe the ability to like, uh, have like a fixed time, like a countdown or something. That was a cool suggestion and make the uh, content more dynamic. So obviously all of this static right now. So we want to carry on expanding the stuff that we recommend you, the lectures, um, so we want to find a way of making this more dynamic as well. But it's all a massive work in progress. Cool, that's it, guys. Um, hopefully you found it interesting. A uh, massive thank you to everyone for coming back as well to see this. Um, I know it's getting pretty late as well. So thank you to everyone that uh, listens. Any questions, guys? Uh, just just, uh, just went for me, alhamdulillah. Uh, like the, uh, this idea was was uh, I, can, I can see myself using it a lot because because like you uh, you're not you're not the only one who kind of struggles without structure uh, and again that how we're going to spend our evening during Ramadan and how we're going to spend our time during Ramadan whilst in lockdown well I can I can see myself using this a lot um, so definitely do push for it to be uh, out there by the last ten days of Ramadan inshallah because I think that's when people will will most uh, uh, most be using it inshallah and 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 uh, the potential for this idea of partner to scale and whatnot is, is very, very good to even be used outside of Ramadan as well. Uh, my question is for Aziz Obai, because I see he's on the line. Uh, in terms of tech stack, what did you, what did you guys build this with? Or what are you planning to build this with? Yeah, uh, so we initially started in looking at kind of the front end as to what we want to do. So we, both myself and Dawad, we settled on using Next.js and we then finally deployed it onto uh, Netlify. And thanks for organizing that Netlify session. That was really useful to just get my head around to how to deploy it. And I think Dawad and myself, we are still kind of trying to figure out what the backend would look like. Um, I know Next.js has its own kind of uh, platform to deploy. 
but we decided to go with Netlify. That was what everyone was using in the hackathon. So to make our life easier, we just gone way ahead with that. Um, if I were to do this again, I probably would push it straight to uh, AWS. Uh, there are a mechanism that I know which I can deploy a lot faster and scale it by just going ahead with to try also learn something out of that at the same time. Yeah, um, in terms of the UI framework, uh, we use uh, Semantic UI for most of the UI, and we're still learning. I'm still learning how to do the uh, some of the uh, branding, uh, and it, it, I mean, having used so many different frameworks, you just each one has its own advantage, and in just knowing what when to use which one it can be a bit difficult. But again, I've learned quite a lot over the last few days. So thank you very much, and the luck luck here. Any other question from anyone around anything specific? Uh, there's some some very good comments just on the on the live channel that we down inshallah. Uh, people saying looks good, alhamdulillah, mashallah, it's all clean, lots of potential, love it, really great idea. I would use this. Uh, there's a shout out for for Khan's presentation skills as well, mashallah. Uh, so alhamdulillah, people are loving it. Uh, and and like I said, inshallah, this is definitely something that I would use personally, uh, and, and and I'm sure a lot of people it, it, that problem statement that you mentioned initially, that's a um, it, it, it's a problem statement that resonates with a lot of people. Uh, so alhamdulillah, do, do keep out, inshallah. Uh, in terms of any other questions from technical side of things and from creative side of things, anything anything anyone wants to ask? Uh, just one question from me. Uh, Brother Aziz will mention the AWS. Uh, which services would you, would you use to deploy? The, the app service? So the front end, so Next.js has, um, uh, um, has its way of generating a static version of the site, so which is what you saw or we deploy on Net, Netlify, but then it requires the back end. So in terms of AWS services, we probably would deploy a static version of fully rendered app uh, uh, equivalent to a generation server side and deploy on an S3 bucket and then front it with a cloud front for layer of caching. And for the data and the API side of things, we will, um, uh, I'll probably use the AWS API gateway and uh, backed it by AWS Lambda. And and if there is a, in terms of the actual data needs to be stored, just push it into DynamoDB. Yeah, that probably the most of the technology and you would need, and probably would kind of automate the infrastructure setup either through a uh, code pipeline, uh, AWS code pipeline, or GitHub has a code pipeline, you know, CI pipe uh, ability. So probably we it up to that to do the automated deployment. Um, Assalamualaikum, brother Azizif. Um, got one question regarding AI. Uh, would you be able to el elaborate a little bit what technology you're using AI? Uh, in regards to the algorithm that is generating the schedule. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Right. Um, I have to say, I have not really looked deep into in depth into that at this stage. Uh, okay. So something Jawad was focusing, I was hoping Jawad would be here to answer it, but we can get if if you leave your name with us, we can get back with the answer. Inshallah. Thank you. And uh, inshallah, uh, if there's not any of the further questions, then Jazakallah Khair Team Four for an amazing presentation and and a, and a very very solid idea. Inshallah, uh, and I look forward to to seeing it live so that we can use it. Uh, now, Hamza, we have a very special presentation from our very own. Uh, Montessi, and he's going to launch one of the products that him and his friends have been working on outside of uh, just in general over the past few weeks. Uh, Montessi, if you are there. So, yeah. Uh, okay, Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah, we can see.
Okay, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone who's listening um, uh, from the attendees on the live stream um, we started working on this project uh, a few months ago and it was almost finished it was really really close to be finished and then um, during this weekend during the hackathon uh, the, the original team that got together um, I think around seven of us uh we got together on the weekend and we just finished it off just to get it past the line um and you know we thought due to the situation um you know it's ramadan at home for the first time ever uh we thought let's launch now um let's give the brothers and sisters you know across the world um our app and and, and launch it inshallah and i shared an early beta with ibrahim um over the weekend and he was just super super like excited and he really wanted me to um bring it to today's showcase and so alhamdulillah here we are uh, for its official launch inshallah so uh, our app is called Quranify um, and essentially what it is is uh, we learn what you love uh, so you can love the Quran um, and this is the the crux of what Quranify is um, just a bit of background a group of friends um, which is myself uh, th three of the brothers that I work with and uh, another three brothers that um, from university and from just, just we've grown up together. Um, we're just a group of friends that, alhamdulillah, we have a passion for um, recitation of the Quran and, 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 and listening to it. And, um, you know, there's a niche group out there that, that likes to find uh, recordings of, of Quran all over the internet and, and, and share it with their friends. And we're one of those group of friends. And over the number of years, alhamdulillah, we've, we've done that quite a bit. And um, of course, after, after a few years, we, we identified a few problems and, and, and something maybe uh, some things that we, we might want uh, ourselves. Um, some of those problems are, um, number one, just finding recitation of Quran in general, you know, finding, it, finding uh, a nice recitation of Quran is actually quite hard to do, uh, would you believe? You, there are a lot of apps out there um, where you can download and, and, and you just see like a grid of all these scholars, okay? And you, you are presented with names of people rather than anything else. Um, you have to choose a surah, you have to choose a sheikh, and then you play. Um, and that's pretty much every single Quran app out there. Um, and one of the other problems there is that you can't really search. Um, you can't really search for a particular style of recitation. What if I want, you know, a fast recitation? What if I want a slow one? What if I want a deeper voice? Um, you know, some people, ha well, most people have a, have a lot of preferences when it comes to Quran and what they like listening to. Um, there's because there's thousands of different styles out there and different combinations. And what we wanted to solve is the, essentially the problem that we want people to be able to discover the kind of Quran recitation that they really love. Um, so of course that they can then go on to love the Quran. Um, and so. One of the ins some of the insights that we had is, you know, throughout our network of people and brothers and you can ask family and friends that people you probably do this yourself is that um, people scour, you know, YouTube, you scour SoundCloud, maybe you might find uh, a rare recitation, someone sent you on a WhatsApp group, maybe one day. And um, through our network, we found many people aggregating and collecting these recitations themselves and saving them into, you know, a USB or a Google Drive. And um, you know, we, we, we thought, why don't, why don't we come up with something that is as like a central, tailored and unified listening experience for the Qur'an that places this aggregation and, and, and learning and loving of the Qur'an at its center and its goal, uh, learning what you love. And so the name uh, inspired by, by, of course, what would be the equivalent in the music world, Qur'anify, uh, was born. Alhamdulillah. Um, so... The journey really was that um, we wanted to we wanted to create something that satisfied four conditions for us. Okay, number one was that it had to be highly curated. Okay, we shouldn't have to search and scour for different styles and try to figure out what you like and, and who's who's a nice reciter. It should be highly curated for you. All of this stuff should be brought to you right at the click of a button. Um, it should be intelligent, so it should learn. Uh, for example, how you how what you like, what you listen to, and and what you connect with, it should be unified and it should be simple. So it should be super simple. It should be an app that you just download or you access on, on your phone, and, and 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 it should be as simple as just clicking a button. Um, so just a bit about the journey. Alhamdulillah, um, you know, I think what happened was that 
we we sort of th- th- these frustrations sort of built up over a long time and um us as a group of friends for i think for 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 a number of months and years we started talking okay why don't we come up with something why don't we build something and and we were sort of learning software engineering at the time we were sort of in uni and by the time we became fully fledged software engineers and designers and etc we thought um let's just meet up for a, for a weekend a coronify weekend and um that was basically it. we got to work and the team itself is made up of a number of people so there's four devs uh rashid uh who works at skudo at the moment um mujavid who also works at skudo in that in that mujavid are co-founders of skudo and myself who also works at skudo so all of the devs actually work at skudo if you haven't heard of us um check out slack i've posted, uh, posted a link to our website there um and one of the best things about this project was that we're already a team that works full time Uh, at work together so we know how to work together as an engineering team and that was a big big bonus uh, in speeding us up um on the designers and data side we have Usman Harun who is a freelance designer and a doctor full time Shahid Bukhari is also a doctor and Yasin Haq who is also, uh, who is a teacher and together alhamdulillah we came together for a weekend and uh here are some of the pics from a few months ago which uh, um just some of the brothers that like, going through um uh, and doing some work on on Chronify. and what we essentially did was we thought okay let's source all of the recordings we have from family from friends uh from youtube from whatsapp from all of these different places that we can find uh, recordings that we love and that we always listen to let's just source them all and 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 comb through them and and put them into one place and it also it all basically started with a spreadsheet um and and i wasn't involved with this but i think three or four of the other brothers were um sort of they spent literally the entire weekend just like listening to every single recording and putting it into a spreadsheet and organizing all of the information and the metadata around that and so what we ended up doing is we started tagging everything so we had you know uh recitations in a studio recitations that were uh from tarawih or from a certain year or from uh, a different style or mode or or, or riwayah of recitation uh styles coming from Egypt Egypt or 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 uh, Moroccan and we basically just tagged everything and and come through it um alhamdulillah very very hard job for the brothers who uh, did it so may Allah reward them for that and and this will of course be an ongoing job um and so what's our stack uh the engineers what we what we what we came together and did is what we know best and the front end is of course react uh, and we wanted it to be uh, a pwa because pwas you can actually install on your phone it's a website you can iterate uh, very very quickly as some of the brothers and um, sisters were discussing on the slack uh, earlier today um it's just a much easier platform to iterate on and so we thought um you can control audio from the web so just make it pwa um the back end is an express js sort of uh, node uh, api with mongodb for the persistence and for um deployment we we basically used uh we basically just wrapped our small applications into docker configurations and hosted it up onto elastic beanstalk on aws which is super fast and you can uh deploy really quickly using a uh, code pipeline on aws if anyone who knows about that um so okay so here's the demo um let me share my other uh window it's got chronify open Uh, can everyone see my old screen? Uh yeah, we can see. Okay, so bismillah, this is the uh first official public demo of Chronify. <laughs> um hopefully it works inshallah. So this uh, what you're looking at right here is a um PWA uh, running on Chrome on my Mac. I've installed the app and so when I open it on Mac it opens uh, sort of like this. It, it will be similar on um on other machines and on of course on Android and iOS you can um, save it to your home screen and it will open uh, very very similar to this. So um a lot of work has gone into the UI alhamdulillah and the, the designers that we have on board uh, Mujawid and Osman they are very very um talented mashallah and they've come up with a very simple and effective UI. Um and essentially what we wanted to achieve um and one of the guys was saying this constantly is that we just want all we want this mvp to do is we just want you to press play and it should just play and it should just give you exactly what you like and over time it would learn and 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 just give you exactly what you like you shouldn't have to think about it you shouldn't have to do much else and so that's what we basically built um as you can see there's a there's a track um all the tracks are tagged um as I, as i mentioned just before um and essentially this is it um i'll try to play something i don't know if we'll come through the mic um shall not bismillah 
مربرہ میں تمام اتراغی ہے Um, so yeah, alhamdulillah, um, we're streaming the files from S3 on Amazon and uh, this is just, yeah, this is, as, as I said, it's, it's a listening experience. So of course, um, try out after this, inshallah, and uh, um, inshallah, you find much benefit in it and it starts to learn uh, what you like as well. Um, there's a few features that we added in just to make it a bit uh, nicer experience and to help inform our sort of um, basic learning model. So for example, you can repeat a track. Um, if you just really like it, you just want to keep listening to it, you can skip uh, forward and back. You can press play as I just showed. Um, you can also seek on the on the track and, and find the right place. Um, you can like a track and that will save it straight to the back end under your account. And you can log in. Um, I can try to show login. So if I click this uh, icon in the corner, it brings up a sort of login screen. And we didn't want to, we didn't want to dabble in any passwords with this app. We just wanted to create a super simple uh, login flow. So essentially what you do is you put in your email. Uh, I'll put in my email right here. And then if I hit enter, um, it sends basically a login link to my email. So if I go and sign, if I go and accept that, um, link okay so i've done that in a separate window so now if i refresh the app i should be logged in if i click the icon on the top corner now i should there you go brings up my preferences so as you can see i've already set some preferences uh, in the past so it's brought it out um and this is really just touching the surface of um of 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 in, of, of you know learning what you love and, and you sort of tailoring your listening experience. And so we've got some basic things like length of, uh, you know, length of recitation, medium, long, or very, very short. Um, you can filter by sort of studio. You can listen to Tarawih. Um, um, you can sort of deselect these. And then you've got speed, speed recitation, you know, uh, in terms of the actual recitation is, is, are they reciting fast or are they reciting very, very slowly? Um, Rewire, which is the types and modes of recitation, um, uh, for those who know about it. Um, if you don't, maybe inshallah you can discover it uh, through Quran and find that would be amazing. Um, there's maqams and there's uh, even region. So we're trying to even, um, you know, collate stuff by the kind of reciter that is actually reciting it and where we've got that recording from. Um, and so you can select these and, and then press close. And then when you press play, it will, um, it will, just, it will just basically... Um, it will just play what you love and what you like according to those preferences, inshallah. Um, so yeah, after this demo, of course, um, give it a try and see what you like. Um, and we've, we've put a lot of effort into the, um, I'll just get my other screen up again. We've, we've put a lot of effort into the, the sort of um, UX um, of the app. Um, so can you see my screen right now, the, the slides again? Uh, yeah, we can see. Okay, so, um, yeah, so generally, um, inshallah, moving forward, what we want to achieve is um, some really basic things that just optimize on that one idea. So we, we just want to learn about what you love, okay, and that's um, the crux of it. We want to maybe introduce some inter artificial intelligence, inshallah, soon, and some learning models based on your preferences, based on maybe how long you listen to a track and, and what, what tracks you sort of skip, what kind of reciters you usually listen to more, um, and just build out that data from loads and loads and loads of people. And we sort of maybe start to build trends in that data and start to really understand what, what, what people, what affects people's hearts in terms of the current station. And uh, of course we want user feedback, inshallah. So that's, um, 
yeah, that's Coronify. Um, go and try it out. It's it's live on the on on the web. Uh, you can go to Coronify.app. Hopefully, it works for you. Inshallah, if you just um, open up on your website and you can save it to your friends PWA. Um, yeah, share it with your friends and family, and that's basically it. Yeah, any questions? Uh, a, a comment from me, Inshallah. Uh, Hamna, uh, Muntasir shared, shared this with me just yesterday, and, and honestly, I've, I've honestly fallen in love with it. I've uh, been using it since last night. Today morning, today afternoon, has actually replaced YouTube for me. Uh, purely because, like, yeah. I, I, I love listening to that Tarawi style or, or, or in Salah. So on my phone from different countries, I visited different masajid, uh, that type of recitation, and to find that on an app, SubhanAllah, is honestly amazing. It's honestly amazing. So, Jazakallah uh, khair to us for... Uh, sorry, Jazakallah khair to you guys for sharing this here and for sharing this with the world. SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you and I mean, and yeah, uh, honestly, it makes me very, very happy to see stuff like this, like tech being used in such a way to to fall in love with the Quran, uh, and I will definitely be using it through Ramadan and after Ramadan as well. I think some of the brothers have some questions, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, so I'll open it up to to the to the public. Uh, um, it's Hasnat from one of the back end devs from Team Two. Thanks, sir. Um, I had two kind of points. First, is there a searching feature? So if someone um, I know also, who also has the app um, has a kind of thing that they listen to, can I search for that um, same audio? Um, and also, if I have the app and another friend has an app, um, can I share a track and sh just forward it to him and say, have a listen to this? Um, yeah, no, really, really good questions. I think the first uh, on the search, there's definitely something that's on our roadmap. Um, we've we had it, we've had we've tested it with a few beta testers over the last couple of months, and uh, one of the biggest uh, feedbacks is search. So we are looking into that, inshallah. And I think um, in terms of sharing a track, I think that's a very good idea. Actually, we haven't thought of that before, so um, I'll take I'll, I'll write that down right now, inshallah. <laughs> um, um, I just want to echo what uh, Ibrahim said. Uh, like this is an amazing idea, and if you want to uh, see some guys with comments, check Team Freeze um, Slack channel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in terms of like going forward, right now is it all manual in terms of the tagging of the um, tracks? Um, yes. So in terms of like in terms of the data import part, the way it works is. We just um, we basically have a huge huge database of just tracks, and um, we have a fleet of brothers who sit down and listen to each track and sort of tag it with the the style and the the, the speed of and, and, and things like this. And um, obviously, longer term, we would want to automate that in some way, but just right now, it's it's it's, uh, it's one of those things that's just quite difficult to do technically. You have to have the trained sort of ear because some, sometimes with, with the Quran uh, sort of different modes of recitation and, and stuff like this it's, it needs a really someone who understands the different sort of subtle changes and sometimes they're really subtle so um, yeah for now it's, it's manual and alhamdulillah we've got a team of brothers that, that are doing it inshallah Subhanallah. and where are you sourcing your sort of recitation from and the, the audio everywhere so everywhere um, right now it's it's been like recordings of people's phones um, YouTube and like um places on like the internet which is like in the corner of the internet you have no idea where to find that recitations um place like places like this and and friends and family who have recordings from like they've gone to tarawih and they, they've, they've recorded the you know the entire surah taha for example and we just we just ask for that recording and and, and ask the permission and we just put it up yeah um just to, again just to echo um it's something that i think a lot of us have been looking for so um may allah bless you and uh yeah uh, Assalamu alaikum bro um, Yeah I just wanted to echo what Osman said MashaAllah like, This is uh, This is I, I'm catching feelings honestly I can't even lie to you MashaAllah This project here is um, So I'm going to start using it as soon as possible MashaAllah I'm going to share it um, I just wanted to ask um, In terms of you know The concept of you know MashaAllah falling in love with the Quran You know A lot of us um, You know We're trying to learn Arabic We don't know enough Arabic To understand the Quran um, so the translation would help in that, you know, in that journey of trying to love the Quran. So have you guys, do you guys have any plans of, you know, including uh, translations and stuff like that down the line? Yeah, I mean, we had like some feedback actually just yesterday, I think, or the day before from a user who, who, who mentioned something similar and um, like introducing translation as you listen to the Quran. Um, there's a lot of 
tech that have that is being built at the moment and has been built around sort of matching translation uh, and ayah to um, to like Quran recitation. Obviously, we um, we went for like tartil is one of those. So where it's, it, I think it's a big technical challenge and. Um, in terms of matching every track up to a specific translation, that's the first thing. And second thing is um, we want to do it right. Um, we want to make sure that um, when we present a translation in front of someone, it's got purpose and it's, and it's something that they can focus on and follow, follow along. So I think it's, um, it's only a matter of time, inshallah. But it's definitely, it's definitely something we want to do. It's just uh, but we want to think about how to do it properly. We're not sure yet. Inshallah. <laughs> Uh, Muntasir, um, so it's a beautiful idea. Um, in terms of like for what Muhammad Hussein is talking about in the translation, um, there are services I think on AWS Transcribe where you could um, just like transcribe the Arabic and then obviously then you have the Arabic transcribed onto the phone and you, maybe you could uh, manually start translating um, some of the Arabic into English. Okay, okay, I'll have a look at that. Shall I write that down? Okay. I think that was an audition to be on the team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to get involved, uh, do let me know as well, of course, Shona. Yeah, I think uh, I think one more thing to note is that, uh, subhanAllah, these guys came up with this idea and like Montessa mentioned, a couple of months ago, they started it off at t- uh, just in a weekend and now, subhanAllah, forwarded it a few months on uh, to now to actually launching it. So, alhamdulillah, like, like, likewise with some of the ideas at this hackathon, you started it at the weekend and potentially you could you could turn into something like like Quranify. Uh, I think this is a very good success story where you start something off small at the weekend and then grow it further, inshallah. Uh, Brother Muntasir, I had a question around the audio and the quality. Um, does all the audio has kind of a good quality when you source them or do you need to remaster any? And also for, uh, I'm assuming people would have various uh, level of connectivity. I'm, obviously, right now, everybody at home, they probably would have Wi-Fi connectivity, but people on the go, uh, they might not have a good connectivity. Are you doing anything specific around uh, kind of variable bit rate uh, for the audio so that people on the move are not maxing out on their data plans? Um, there's some deep tech questions. <laughs> well, that is a, um, um, yeah, I think with the, in terms of like um, connection, connection sort of issues. I think uh, one of the things we're thinking about right now is how do we make the app um, offline first? Because at PWA is sort of the good thing about it is that there are websites, but they sort of work offline. So we're trying to think about how can we, um, without without using up user storage, um, sort of maybe cache tracks or or um, you know download lower quality files of those of those tracks or something that that works offline or on on bad connections. Um, and your first, what was your first question, sorry? Uh, first question around how do you ensure the quality of the audio that you actually right. source? And then second one was uh, how do you ensure that it, you are streaming a quality which is still listenable? So, I mean, the whole experience is around being able to listening to some of those uh, yeah. conversation which you fall in love with and you don't want that audio to be distorted while you are traveling, for example, or you are on your commute. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Um, I think, yeah, the quality in terms of quality of the tracks that are coming through, alhamdulillah, most of them are okay. Um, we do need to go through every single track again and and do like a real deep clean and 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 focus on some of stuff like you said, like quality of the tracks. And um, yeah, well, I'll t- definitely write that down. Take it forward, inshallah. Jack um, Any other questions? Assalamualaikum Wa alaikum how are you going? Mashallah, I'm using that, mashallah. I just want to ask, in terms of adding, uh, would you would you allow users to add uh, their own recordings or how would that work in terms of increasing the variety of recordings on the app? Yeah, so right now um, the tracks are all sourced by the team. Um, but in terms of like, in terms of moving forward, of course, in, in, into scale, and, and, and really push the, the listening experience and get, get a variety of tracks. We're going to have to, at some point, open it up to the community. Um, I think right now what we're probably going to do is, is have a small group of people who, um, if, if you are a close contact of ours and, and you share something with us, we'll probably add it to a pool of, of tracks that have been submitted and then, and then sort of manually go through them like that. And then maybe in the, in the, in the near future, inshallah, once we have a good base of tracks that we've, we've sort of 
uh, maxed out the people that we know and, and our networks, then we'll probably introduce like a community share feature. Um, but yeah, I, I think until then, right now, we still have a maxed out all of the people we know and and and, and our networks um, and their recordings, for example. Sure. Okay. Yes, Michael. Um, this Russell. Um, you mentioned um, like the community adding tracks. Uh, a big part of this is kind of the categorization, um, and like if it's open to the public, it would need like a lot more um, people categorizing it and stuff. Um, have you like thought about looking at machine learning and stuff and kind of like training, training um, yet yeah, to automatically categorize? Yeah, no, is that correct? Yes. That, that's, yeah, so that's what something I was just mentioning, the, I think, on the second question, which was like um, machine learning on, on, on in terms of specifically the tagging, in terms of finding out what, which rewire is and, and stuff like this is, is quite hard at the moment. Uh, we're going to try to, um, this, is why, this is why one of the biggest things I mentioned was in building the data set that we have and building how much data we have around tags on tracks, because the more data you have, obviously, the more, um, the easier it is to train a machine learning model. So um, I think right now, we're, we're, uh, if we can build loads and loads of data, inshallah, loads and loads of people listening to the app, then that will only uh, make it easier and easier and quicker for us to get to some sort of AI and machine learning model solutions, inshallah. But for sure. Yeah, it, it, that looks really good, by the way. I'm definitely going to use it. Uh, I really like the um, categorization and stuff. So. Uh, one question here, please. Oh. Uh, Slam. Uh, just very really quickly, uh, would you be providing an API so um, other apps could, um, or other websites could uh, look at using your data that you've spent a lot of time categorizing? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you on that one, uh, inshallah. Listen, let me talk to the team. Salaam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Beautiful app, Akhi. Wallahi, ma, I, I'm so in love with it already um i have a question um so i know that um it's a pwa um going forward do you have um any intention of creating native applications uh for this um, um yeah i think i think um right now so like I, well, we're having this discussion on the slack actually today and um with the dean developers on i think general chat which was like when, how do you strike the balance between a you know PWA and a, a native experience? Um, and I think some one of the benefits of PWA is obviously you can just iterate so quickly. Literally, I can deploy right now and it will be up in like five minutes, um, pretty much to everyone, um, you know, bar service workers and stuff. But um, I think on a, maybe on a product level, we need to iterate as much as possible right now. And maybe PWA makes sense for now. And then when, once we, once it gets to you know like some sort of um, some sort of maturity like in the experience and like it's not going to change too much and that often then i think um we can start to put it onto like native applications like mac or or uh, ios or android like native applications and it shouldn't be too hard um given that it's a react app um you can very easily like put a thin wrap around it react native or, or other other ways to do it but um yeah it's just a matter of time um like everything else inshallah, i think it's just a matter of time inshallah Mashallah. And one, one other question. What has been the, uh, the biggest uh, technical challenge in, in developing that? Um, I think the biggest technical challenge and will still be the biggest is, is, is the tagging. Because um, um, right now it's manual, but you also have to um, match those pre your preferences against those tags. And, and, and that's basically the, the, the really early version of, of like learning uh, what you like. And I think that's going to be the hardest thing that we're going to have to deal with is just that sort of learning uh, what you like against the, the, the different styles and making sure we get the, the tags right on each track. That's the hardest bit um, because even right now, I'm sure there's inconsistencies in the data um, and, and we need to make sure that, that yeah, that, that I think that's the hardest bit, just making sure that part is right. Uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, I think just because of time, we're going to cut the questions there, inshallah, because uh, it's getting late and developers have been up all night uh, pushing away code and creatives making presentations I wonder what Hamla Montessil and the team are here 24-7 on Slack uh, so do join the Slack uh, the developer Slack workspace and ping any questions you do have inshallah uh, and, and, and we'll take from there uh, so Jazakallah Khan Montessil once again Wallah I'm very very happy that you decided to 
present this and, and launch this here today because uh, it's definitely something that I will be using and it's definitely replacing YouTube for me, inshallah. Uh, and, and I'm sure there's plenty of uh, Quran lovers out there that, that do love that little bit equi recitation, live, live recitation from Taraweeh and Salah. Um, so, subhanAllah, again, a uh, very, very amazing idea. Um, so, yeah, inshallah, um, once again, Jazakallah khair to all of the teams for, for, for presenting today um, and for developing the products that they have done in such a short amount of time. Uh, wallahi, uh, you, you, you guys should be very, very proud of what you've achieved, inshallah. And hopefully in the next few days, uh, Dean Developers will be getting back to you, inshallah, in terms of getting some feedback on how the hackathon went um, and also providing some personalized feedback and also getting some feedback from you guys so that we can um, have better hackathons in the future, inshallah. So yeah, uh, uh, Jazakallah khair for your time. Um, I know it is quite late at 9.30. Uh, please do hit us up on socials, inshallah. We do have a few events that will be that we will be launching during this uh, lockdown period, inshallah. Uh, some tech talks online and whatnot, inshallah. That 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 we'll be planning. Um, and yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, for myself, this has been a very very uh, enjoyable experience. Just jumping to the different teams, learning learning from you guys as well. Um, and and subhanallah, it's, uh, it's been an amazing amazing privilege for me. And for the rest of the Dean Developers team to to pitch in where we can and and, and learn from you guys. So uh, so yeah, alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair for making this experience for us um, enjoyable as well. Jazakallah khair, thank you so much. Yeah, barakallah uh, Do do remain active on Slack and do remember, inshallah, that Ramadan is around the corner. I know I know we do have a lot of working MVPs, inshallah, but it would be good to. To, to push them out, inshallah, on, the, on your socials and, and market them and whatnot. And we'll, we'll, we'll do the best that we can from our side, inshallah. Uh, and yeah, jazakallah khair to everyone tuning in for the live stream as well. Alhamdulillah, at one point, I think we had around 70 people tuning in. Um, so, so alhamdulillah, it's been, a, it's been a very, very enjoyable experience, uh, presentation-wise, product-wise, and seeing all of the MVPs. Uh, so inshallah, I'll leave you guys there. Uh, please do keep us in your du'as and do keep the developers in your du'as as well, uh, that it turns into and uh, a, a place where, where we can bring real benefit to the community and inshallah hopefully produce produce apps in the future just like just like Quranify um, with, the, with the with the with the teams that we have here alhamdulillah we have the skills we have all of these things uh, so we can aim for that inshallah uh jazakallah khair once again and if you do have any questions do ping us on slack um so yeah inshallah is there anything else to say um anyone else wants to say from the dean developers team I'm going to take that as a no, inshallah. Uh, so I'll leave you guys to it. Please do enjoy the rest of your evening and, and do keep us in your du'as. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.